la impunidad con la que la organización viola constantemente el derecho internacional. Mr. Stoltenberg, NATO has been vocal in identifying China as a threat. The Vilnius Summit Declaration states that China is trying to subvert the so-called rules-based international order and criticizes China for being opaque about its strategy and intentions. Now, my first question is, how is it possible to subvert an order that has no constitution, no basis whatsoever in international law? And if you think it does, in fact, appeal to or have a standing in international law, why then do NATO and NATO members repeatedly violate international law without any consequence? Yugoslavia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, for example. China has not illegally invaded and bombed a sovereign country in over 40 years, while the US and our allies have hardly stopped in the same period. Killing millions of civilians, displacing millions more, and illegally sanctioning dozens of countries to the point where tens of thousands of men, women and children are extrajudicially executed each year for simply existing in a country targeted by Western imperialism. Is it not time to return to multilateral international forums based on diplomacy and international law like China has repeatedly urged the US to do? In July, NATO called on China to play a constructive role as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and to abstain from supporting the war effort in any way. The reality is that their positioning has allowed them to play a constructive role as a potential mediator for peace. It was NATO, the EU and the US who dismissed their peace plan. You yourself ridiculed the plan saying that China didn't have much credibility. Credibility is about consistency and being believable. China has stayed neutral in the war, did not impose sanctions, still trades with Russia and Ukraine, and has flatly stated that they will not supply weapons to either side in the conflict. The EU has armed one side in the conflict, imposed massive sanctions, but continues to be one of Russia's biggest trade partners. Tell me, Mr. Stoltenberg, who has the most credibility? Recuerden que nunca se sabe cuándo puede ser la última vez que nos veamos por este medio y por lo tanto los invito a suscribirse a mi canal Telegram, Diego en la Lucha. Allí no hay censura y pongo todo por más fuerte que sea. Continuemos. Claro que esta crisis del imperialismo se puede ver perfectamente cuando los funcionarios de la Casa Blanca salen con preocupación a repudiar los movimientos de sus enemigos. Por ejemplo, la reunión que tuvo Putin con el líder norcoreano Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un uh, vowing to provide full, unconditional support for Russia's so-called sacred fight uh, to defend its security interests, which of course is not what it's doing with respect to the, the war in Ukraine. That of course is troubling. Uh, when you see what looks to be increased cooperation and probably military transfers, as we've said for some time, we have reason to believe they were uh, going to discuss military transfers. Um, that is quite troubling and would potentially be in violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions. Is that a concern that, that Russia could be actively uh, Yeah. Um, promoting uh, improving the, the North Korean uh, uh, Absolutely. That's why I rec or that's why that was what I was referring to in my reference to the multiple UN Security Council resolutions uh, 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 against North Korea's ballistic missile program, which Russia itself voted for and now could potentially be violating. Si nos vamos hacia el conflicto entre Ucrania y Rusia, como dije en videos anteriores, basta escuchar a analistas occidentales para saber exactamente lo que está pasando, o no. It's actually quite stunning how unsuccessful the Ukrainians have been and what a god-awful price they have paid. I mean, it's actually sickening to read the stories and watch the videos about the casualties in Ukraine. Uh, these are people who are being led to the slaughter. And in fact, the West was pushing them to launch this offensive. There's all sorts of evidence that the Ukrainians were dragging their feet because they understood that it wasn't going to work. But nevertheless, we pushed very hard for them to launch this offensive on 4 June. And it's quite clear where we are. Como si fuera poco para Occidente, desde China acaban de dar una bofetada de argumentos contra el Reino Unido, bajándole el ego de un plumazo. Si no me creen, miren lo que declaró Víctor Gao, portavoz del Partido Comunista Chino. Now, how Britain looks at China, it's up to the British government and people to decide. But I think it will be completely misguided for Britain to view China as an enemy or adversary or a competitor. What do China and Britain compete with? China is the largest manufacturer of automobiles, 
competing with Britain? No. China is the largest exporter of EV cars and will lead the whole world in EV production. Is Britain a competitor? No. China will be the biggest and most important producer and R&D in terms of semiconductor in no time. Does that mean that China competes with Britain? No. China will be the leading nation in AI revolution. Is Britain a competitor? No. So I think British government should not overestimate its impact on the global scene and view Britain as a rival of China. China is not. China is a fact. China is a mega trend for Britain to live with and get along with. Let's make peace rather than agitating for war. Mientras la OTAN le pega a Rusia y a China y viceversa, apareció el príncipe heredero de Arabia Saudita, Bin Salman, manifestando cuáles son sus intenciones para Medio Oriente. أنا أعتقد أن أوروبا الجديدة هي الشرق الأوسط المملكة العربية السعودية في الخمس سنوات القادمة سوف تكون مختلفة تماما البحرين سوف تكون مختلفة تماما الكويت حتى قطر على خلافنا معهم لديهم اقتصاد قوي سوف تكون مختلفة تماما بعد خمس سنوات الإمارات، عمان، لبنان، الأردن، مصر، العراق والفرص التي لديها إذا نجحنا في الخمس سنوات القادمة سوف تلتحق فينا الدول أكثر وسوف تكون النهضة القادمة في العالم في الثلاثين سنة القادمة في الشرق الأوسط إن شاء الله هذه حرب السعوديين هذه حربي اللي أخوضها شخصيا ولا أريد أن أفارق الحياة إلا وأرى الشرق الأوسط في مقدمة مصاف في العالم وأعتقد أن هذا الهدف سوف يتحقق مئة في المئة no podía faltar en este video las palabras del propio Vladimir Putin en relación a la decadencia del sistema político estadounidense. Потому что это показывает всю гнилость американской политической системы, которая не может претендовать на то, чтобы учить других демократии. Все, что происходит с Трампом, это преследование по политическим мотивам своего политического значит, конкурента. Вот что это такое. И делают это на глазах общественности США и всего мира. Они просто обнажили свои проблемы внутренние. И в этом смысле, если они пытаются с нами там в чем-то бороться, хорошо, потому что это показывает, кто с нами борется. Показывает, как еще в советское время говорили, говорили значит, звериный облик американского империализма. Да. Звериный оскал. Para rematar, en este informe hay un mandatario que ha sabido mantener un nivel de frialdad pocas veces visto en relación a la enorme cantidad de agresiones que ha sufrido su país. Estoy hablando del presidente venezolano Nicolás Maduro, quien no ha parado un instante de tejer relaciones con el gigante asiático. Esto es una belleza. Estamos en el Palacio de Pueblo de China. Éxito total la jornada de trabajo. Éxito total. Tres horas y media trabajando con el presidente Xi Jinping. Lo que vamos es para la luna. Hemos declarado llevar la asociación a una asociación estratégica a toda prueba y todo momento, lo máximo que se puede. Lo que vamos es para la luna a una nueva etapa esplendorosa entre China y Venezuela. ¿Vos qué pensás? En base a lo que acabas de ver. ¿Tendrá el modelo occidental los días contados o puede haber un giro en esta historia? Leo tus comentarios, te pido que te suscribas a mi canal, actives la campana de notificaciones, en la opción todas, le des pulgar arriba y compartas. Muchas gracias.